Travis Wayne Goodsell. So, I, my viewers have noticed that I've produced the fruits of being a prophet, seer, revelator, and translator. And that's how I'm world famous for, is translator. I deciphered Paleo-Hebrew. I deciphered the remaining Egyptian hieroglyphs that are not listed in any sign list, as well as other ancient languages. <coughs> and have been demonstrating uh, translation of multiple ancient and classical languages for you in my videos that are essential for the topics that I talk about. And so, you know me by my fruit. It's good fruit. I'm right. Nobody can deny that other than denialists. And they're bleep bleeps. But Mormons deny for a different reason. Because to them, only the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has the authority to have the gifts of prophet, seer, revelator, and translator. And Mormons don't even pay attention that the Mormon presidents never, ever, ever, ever claim translator. And so does that justify Nelson botching multiple translation failures? at the pulpit of conference? No! Because Mormons still believe you have that gift, Nelson. And instead of acknowledging that Nelson botched translation, they changed the manuals. And so Mormons are getting dumbed down with every conference talk that Nelson gives. And so, it comes from section 107, verses 91 and 92. And again, the duty of the president of the office of the high priesthood is to preside over the whole church and to be like unto Moses. Has anybody been watching my channel? Has anybody been following me? Has anybody at least read the second vision, verse 40? And if you don't even know what the second vision is, oh my God. I'm not even asking if you've read it from the Joseph Smith papers to know that it's Nephi and not Moroni, but still, yeah, that's the Jewish Christ. Joseph Smith is saying, hey, the Jewish Christ is ours, the man like Moses. And in section 103, verse 16, Joseph Smith reveals the bombshell to Mormons. He's Mormon. And so you need to find a man who has the following gifts. Behold, here is wisdom. Yea, to be a seer, a revelator, a translator, and a prophet, having all the gifts of God which he bestows upon the head of the church. And Mormons refuse to believe. They're in denial of the word of God through Joseph Smith because this church has to be true. But yeah, that's why Mormons deny. This has to be interpreted as Brigham Young had authority to succeed Joseph Smith. Because if Brigham Young does not have authority, then this church is a fraud. And so rather than going to Joseph Smith directly, Mormons instead double, triple, quadruple down on their spiritual witness that this church is true regardless of the truth regardless of the evidence, regardless of this church being a fraud.
and it's sad. I've shown you my Urim and Thummim. I'll show you my Urim and Thummim as the thumbnail picture. But uh, I got an email from a longtime viewer, sort of long time, not the longest time. I'm, I'm aware of my longtime viewers. But uh, I got an email from him, and he talked about how several years back, a, uh, a man came to him and, and told him that if anybody claimed to have a Yerman Thummim and to be using it, that we should automatically dismiss him as a false prophet and his reasoning. Only the current president of the church has that gift. Only he can have the Urim and Thummim to be a seer, revelator, translator, and a prophet. So nobody else is allowed to have it. So if anybody else is claiming to have it, I'm claiming to have it. <laughs> and I also linked uh, him, uh, not only showing him the picture, of the Urim and Thummim, which I've shown you guys. And so I'll, I'll show you again. Right? Have them out. I never use them. I don't need to. My brain is a Urim and Thummim. But yeah. Yes. I was told Joseph Smith's brain was a Urim and Thummim. <laughs> which is why he didn't want to put on the glasses. <laughs> because it hurt his eyes. <laughs> oh, people just make up so much stuff to try to try to cling on to their spiritual witness but that's the whole thing all these speculations are designed to be faith promoting <laughs> so that Mormons don't have a faith crisis because they got a spiritual witness it has to be true <laughs> somehow it has to be true and we'll just keep lying until we get something that fits if you have to lie, it's not true. It's just, oh my God, there are just too many Mormons who maintain lies and call it a spiritual witness. And it's, you just, you're not getting the scriptures. You're not understanding them if you're reading them. Because anybody who makes such a comment, I would instantly assume you haven't even read the passages in the scriptures. You don't even know the doctrine. And so there's no way you could be actually reading them, because if you're reading them, you clearly have an English grammar problem and comprehension problem. Dear God. And if you don't understand what I mean and you're getting upset because your spiritual witness is now threatened, <laughs> it's even in Matthew. It's Matthew chapter 7. No, not judge you not, lest you be judged, which is always taken out of context, especially by Christians and Mormons. But no, we're talking about by their fruits ye shall know them. If I would get the right passage, verse 15 of Matthew 7. Beware of false prophets. Okay? Which come unto you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now, these are analogies. They're not meant to be real. You're not going to see Nelson wearing a sheep's clothing, maybe a sheepskin suit. Do they have those? There's a store that's right across the street from Temple Square that sells men's suits and other fancy high high list clothing and uh, often the 70 are most frequented there I used to know a woman who worked there she told me all about it I would have liked to have dated her for more but uh, I don't know what happened it just fizzled out and didn't go anywhere it's too bad so sad she could have been my second ex-wife instead of the second ex-wife that I ended up having but you shall know them by their fruits. And if you don't understand science, 
what he's talking about here is the scientific process of agronomy. Because you can't use a spiritual witness to plant food. You're going to starve and die. You have to go through the scientific test each and every single harvest for each and every single type of seed that you're hoping will produce fruit. But you have to do the work. And fortunately, we just go to the grocery store and buy it. <laughs> Big corporations now do all the the work and we take it for granted and so yeah he goes on do men gather grapes of thorns figs and thistles no so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit and he just goes on and on on this wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them but he's talking about a false prophet so you have to go to Alma chapter 32, starting in verse 28. We will liken the word unto a seed. And so a precept. When the prophets get up at the pulpit of conference and give us a whole bunch of precepts, you're supposed to test them. This is the test right here. It's a scientific test. And I can testified to you not with just a spiritual witness with a physical manifestation witness that this is true that science is the foundation of religion and especially Mormonism of Joseph Smith I don't know, well, I do know why they're the great and abominable church. That's why they took out the lectures on faith. Even though it did need to have an editing, I understand it was Sidney Rigdon that had given them. But nonetheless, very good stuff. It belongs back in our Doctrine and Covenants. But Heber J. Grant said, no, we're going to be evangelical Christian now, so we can't have science based faced faith <laughs> and so yeah if you don't know church history I mean dear God I mean yeah they hid it from us I had to do the research and thanks to Google search I can do that research now whereas before without Google search I was a victim of the church's lies like you are we all are I'm Mormon remember I had to do the work. I had to study the scriptures. I had to learn the precepts. I had to find out through science-based processes if they're all true. And it's a lot of work. You can't just do it overnight. You can't just cram. You have to be diligently working on this every single day of your life. While you're at work, while you're at school, and at play a sunbeam and so fortunately our whole lives are based upon this concept of obtaining knowledge and so everything we do we have to do it this way because if we live by a spiritual witness our whole lives you're gonna get fired from your job you're gonna get kicked out of school and you're gonna starve to death and die and so, I, you, I know you guys are doing the right process to get by and get along, unless you're still living with your parents. And not because your parents sabotaged you, and the church sabotaged you, and your ex sabotaged you. and You get an excuse. But those who never marry, never even try... Because they just say, uh, I don't want to get a job. Uh, I need to get a job that pays me a million dollars a year. I, anything less, I, I, it's not worth it. There are those Mormons out there. I know you. You are in the young, younger and older singles wards. 
and nobody wanted to date you. But uh, it, it's not complicated. You got to produce the results. So like a, a seed, you got to produce the fruit. Otherwise, you'll never know. You can have all the spiritual witness faith you want. You can strengthen it all you want. You're still going to starve and die. It's not complicated, but you can't see it because you're blinded by this church and your spiritual witness. The same thing that is ruining you, that is sabotaging you, blinding you from comprehending scripture. And so the prophets are the ones responsible, which means their fruit is corrupt. They are testifying to you every single time they get up, not just because they say they're Christian and Jesus. We're supposed to be Jewish, man like Moses. But every single doctrine they talk about, every single news they talk about, this is what I keep telling you. They have so much stuff for video criticism that I'm so far behind and I just barely started all over again here at this new apartment. So far behind. And I'm missing out on stuff. I missed Purim, for example. Uh, and I'm about to miss the sign in the heaven for today. <laughs> from my Urim and Thummim. So, I'll put it up, I'll, yeah, let me see if I can remember. <laughs> Picks. I Urim and Thummim with uh, the Stellarium. Because Abraham. Urim and Thummim, you see the heavens. And you're able to tell scriptures by reading the heavens. And the scriptures are signs in the heavens, star dates. And so, yeah, I just finished uh, Strange New Worlds, season one, and was able to correct the, uh, the chronology uh, in my files for Star Trek. And then I was thinking, I'm going to transfer it over and watch it. But then I thought, well, I really should watch it from the beginning. And now I'm thinking, no, I should probably just watch it. Because I don't know when I'll get to start all over. Because I'll have to start all over again with Enterprise. <laughs> so, and although I probably should watch, well, no, I should watch them in the chronological order. Because they went back in time, so I should wait until I get to that point of the movie even though it is first contact it's new uh, generated new generations is that what it's called or generations but anyway it's the Picard one where they go back in time and and I can't remember the, the guy's name who invented the first rocket ship to hit warp speed or whatever and then the Vulcans it is the Vulcans, right? Yeah, it's not the Romulans. Don't think. I think it's the Vulcans. Who then finally graces them with their presence because they achieve warp speed. So, yeah. It's good. They, they make sure to get the theology correct, which, awesome. It's frustrating, like the Simpsons. But they do it on purpose as a sarcasm. They purposely screw up the theology. And so, you know, you have the... the uh, I, I don't watch it anymore because it's now on Disney. They don't put out DVDs. And they, they were even struggling to put out DVDs with Fox. They finished with season 21, I think. And that's it. No more DVDs. And they're like in season 50 billion. So, yeah, then... Disney ruined it. And Disney's ruining Marvel, too, by not making DVDs available for everything. And they're ruining other shows, like Monsters at Work and uh, the new 
Turner and Hooch TV series. I want those on DVD. They won't do it because they want money. And they don't realize that if they do these things for the poor people, that they will get more money. They just don't think. They just think, oh, we'll charge the most for our product, and that'll get us the most money back. No. Charge the least you can for your product, and people will buy more than they would if you charge the higher prices. I saw this at Blockbuster. I know what I'm talking about. Trust me, Disney. Make them available on DVD. You will make more money. DVDs are cheap. I know this because VHS tapes were not cheap. <laughs> but you got to make better quality of your DVDs when you do put out a DVD. Because you purposely force people to buy the Blu-ray or 4K. Stupid. I saw that when they transitioned from the regular DVDs into the HD DVDs. This has to do with fruit, guys. By their fruits you shall know them. You know a corrupt company that purposely comes out with regular DVDs with a low volume quality, purposely done, so that you have to buy the Blu-ray or the HD and then go, wow, the sound is so much better. <laughs> the picture and volume were perfect when DVDs first came out. And they purposely tanked them to force people to buy higher quality. And it pisses me off when they do that. And so with Disney, the new cartoons that they come out with on DVD, and they also have a Blu-ray for them, the DVD will have those scenes that skip and freeze where you'll the screen freezes but you'll still hear the voice speaking or there'll be a, a, a blip in there similar to Batman Returns Batman Returns where he lowers the the was it the commissioner or the it was the one bad cop lowers him down on the rope and that scene is struggling to get through and it was a bad thing on all DVDs <sighs> so annoying anyway by their fruits ye shall know them and the prophets are false and I've demonstrated for you how to find the true and you won't do it cuz your spiritual witness is at stake and I don't understand you see the true, and Joseph Smith is true. Fall back on Joseph. Why won't you? Oh, I'm scared. The church has got to be true. No, it doesn't. Give Nelson the middle finger and leave. And then protest whenever he commits a crime. Nobody's protesting when they commit crimes. There should have been a huge protest for the SEC violation. That's a crime. That's not a, oh, oops, oh, was I overdrawn or underdrawn? Oh, okay, here's five million. Does that make it all better? No, it was a crime. They got fined. And yes, it was worthless to them because they're multi-trillionaires. And so five million is like petty cash. It's not even petty cash. It's even, it's Venezuelan equivalents. <laughs> in the exchange rate. I mean, seriously, dear God. If you're going to punish the church, punish them. <sighs> what does it take to destroy them again? They were destroyed, you know. The United States shut them down in 1887. Edmunds Tucker Act. Tithing was being used to grant citizenship with slave trade of new converts from Europe. Brigham Young is corrupt. What does it take, Mormons? How much longer are you going to endure captivity? Do you not want your your true prophet to reveal things and prophesy things and see things and translate things for you? Are you happy with a prophet who gets up at the pulpit of conference and lies? 
And then the church then changes everything to conform and comply to his lies? Dear God, it's a train wreck. And you just don't care. We thank thee, O God, for a false prophet to lead us straight down to hell. Dear God, you guys are twisted.